Hi again and welcome to another video from TAP. Today I will be providing a very high level introduction to the Virtual Instrument Software Architecture or VISA. I will keep the message short and relatively to the point by providing you a little insight as to what VISA is. More important and more illustrative will be details on why you might find VISA to be a necessity. We will dance around the topic of who does Visa best, and then we will finish up with a short conclusion. So let's begin. So the image shown here is pulled from the broader Visa specification that can provide you 329 pages of glorious detail. Since I'm limited by time, here's how I might summarize. A singular software API for easily integrating a variety of different communication protocols for control of programmable instrumentation. Ta-da! It was born out of a necessity to simplify an end user's experience as their instrumentation needs became more complex and demanding. So why might I use it? Is it because I'm lazy? Well, let's face it. At the end of the day, I just want to send commands and receive responses to queries. I don't want to sweat the details. That said, I could easily make the argument that the reason I use Visa is because I value my time. So vendors started off with standards for GPIB and VXI or VIXI, which have all sorts of interesting things you can do with device control commands that are specific to their architecture and bus specifications. For a cheaper approach, RS-232 is available, and guess what? It also has its own set of rules and expectations to work from. Next, we see Ethernet and LAN interface enter the picture where TCP IP is used as the comms foundation. This started off as just the use of raw sockets, but then VIXI 11 came to pass with its own set of standards, and now we see the newer high slip protocol being used to fully take advantage of synchronous overlap mode of Ethernet and add support for IPv6. And, and good grief, we can't forget about that fast and inexpensive USB um, it's available through USB TMC. While there are different types of or versions with each new one getting progressively faster, we'll want the means for using any one of them to be straightforward. Beyond the communications protocols, we also need to take into consideration that not everyone is developing software and using the same programming language. The Visa standards have documentation that specifies or that specifically address text-based languages like C, C++, and Python a graphical or G language like LabVIEW, COM and .NET IO library tools implemented in standalone or IV drivers available to languages like C Sharp and Visual Basic. I'm a relatively resourceful person, and I imagine you are too, um, who could come up with a crafty solution of using any of these communications options within my system software, regardless of programming language. But I have little motivation to spend my time reinventing the wheel. I can imagine you, the viewer, are in the same situation. Does this mean we're both lazy? You might get an idea that if Visa is standardized, then you would be simply able to go to a single source and acquire the tools you need. However, this is not the case. Visa was standardized through an agreement of multiple test instrumentation vendor powerhouses, and different companies like to have the freedom to do their own thing. Two of the biggest are National Instruments, now just known as NI, and Keysight, who used to be part of Agilent Technologies before that, and part of Hewlett Packard before that. Other players in the game are Tektronix, Rodian Schwartz, and Enritsu, and there are more beyond just these. So who makes the best Visa API? The answer to this is simple. It's a matter of what your usage, findings, and your own personal preference is. Generally, if a bulk of your instrumentation comes from a specific vendor, then you might opt for their Visa tools. Keysight is quite the instrumentation juggernaut in the market, so that makes them an easy choice. However, NI made a name for itself primarily through its software products that were used to sell its hardware. So if it's a software tool you need, this might give you the impression that a software company is the best place to put your trust. I've used Visa packages from both with an overwhelming amount of success. I've also used Visa from Tektronix and Rodian Schwartz, 
but in a far more limited fashion. Again, also successful. For me, because I've done a bit of customer support uh, dealing with software, I've been forced to switch between them. In most cases, you can even have two Visa installations available on your system with a software managing tool, also usually from the Visa vendors, that allows you to switch between them as needed. So what am I using right now? Multiple. I have one work laptop configured to use Keysight Visa, another tower PC that has NI Visa and Tech Visa, and another laptop with just NI Visa. I use Python quite a bit for work and personal projects, so my home PC will use a purely Python implementation of Visa, PyVisa, and I think I probably still have NI Visa installed if I want to switch up my Visa backend, and there are probably still remnants of Rhodes Visa available if I wanted to go that direction. On my Raspberry Pi setups, I strictly use Pi Visa because life is unpredictable. I may change any or all of these at a moment's notice. Visa has a rich history and lots of juicy details for those interested in them. Since there are sites dedicated to sharing the standards, rules, and regulations so that I don't have to repeat them here, I'll let you go to those. Um, I'll instead provide you some helpful links in the description and or comment sections. For me, the most interesting things are the details in getting up and running with Visa in different programming languages and IDEs. So I'm looking forward to sharing these different scenarios with you in future videos. And finally, thank you for watching.